Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the top triggers tend to be for the dismissal avoidant attachment style individual in the workplace specifically. And something we don't talk about enough that's really important to recognize is that we have an attachment style in the workplace. And it's because our attachment style are our programs. So we bring them into all areas of life. So I'm doing a short series for this month of June, um, all about our attachment styles in the workplace in a bit more detail. We've got a full course on it. You can check out for free. Um, and also you can check out our burnout course or specifically if you're a DA, our conflict communication course. And there's a whole area that addresses conflict resolution in the workplace. It's a really powerful Powerful opportunity for growth for DAs. You can check it all out for free. Um, check it all out. Did I say that properly? For free for seven days using the link below. Um, and also in June is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month to everybody. So um, the very first thing that's really important to recognize if you are a DA is that you may be triggered by criticism way more than you're allowing yourself to see. Criticism isn't just in romantic relationships. Oftentimes, DAs will find themselves feeling really defensive, shut down, um, or sort of like demoralized by criticism very easily from others. And it's because criticism reaches you at your core in a different way than it often reaches different attachment styles. So it triggers this core wound that says, I am defective. Something's wrong with me at my core, like my character, my person. A lot of other attachment styles have a bit of a separation from that, where if somebody criticizes them, they'll feel, they'll sort of think along the lines of, oh, I made a mistake. My behavior was you know, suboptimal right now. Not I at my core am defective or wrong or flawed, right? So they'll sort of make this like, oh, I made a mistake. So my behavior versus myself as a person, um, whereas DAs really like take it on myself at my core, meaning that because this is a program for you, it's going to show up and affect the way that you interact in your workplace relationships. And it may be something that makes it very difficult to like take in criticism. So it's important to let people know about this, you know, remind people, um, do the work on overcoming this yourself because it will allow you to be more open-minded to receiving feedback. It will also help you feel less triggered and um, less shut down by, by experiences like this in your workplace. They won't hurt so much. Um, so this can be a really, really big one. Another big thing that um, will trigger dismissive avoidance is if there's a lack of clarity on what's expected um, from other people. Often I find that DAs may go into a bit of a freeze mode if somebody's not giving them really specific direction and clarity. And if they leave things like too open-ended or ambiguous or, um, you know, sort of figure it out for yourself. If a DA has to figure out something for themselves, that's like their own independent work where they're assigned to it themselves, they can be quite good. But when they're working in a team or with other people or have to submit something that like, somebody else has to make okay or not, and there's a lack of clarity, this is where DAs often feel kind of like unsafe, um, triggered again by like, hey, you know, what do you expect of me? Um, and it can make them feel like they're just sort of in this like gray area that they tend to feel a lot of discomfort around. Our next big thing is DAs can sometimes be triggered by people's emotional or very impulsive decisions. DAs really feel safe and comfortable by taking time to think things through, figure things out, put a system around it, really analyze it all the way through. Um, and because DAs are generally more of our analytical types in the workplace, um, there is a big correlation there. And there's also a correlation with this meaning that you're gonna be more triggered by people who are making these like rash decisions or quick decisions. And it's important to remember that both serve at different times within a workplace dynamic. Um, and there's sort of benefits and drawbacks to both when in excess. Um, another thing, is DAs tend to really put a lot of emphasis, I notice, as a general rule or pattern on like efficiency um, and really wanting there to be a lot of like efficiency, um, you know, getting things done in an efficient mode. Again, sort of from like a systematic perspective, not efficiency, meaning what I just said, the, the quick decisions, those snap decisions, they don't see that as efficient, right? They see that as maybe fast moving or impulsive, but efficient also means like there's a practical workable component at the same time that makes sense, right? Efficient means like fast and effective. Um, so they really want that like effectiveness, but they tend to like putting those systems and seeing things sort of get done and, and come to life. Another thing is dismissive avoidance really generally don't like um, feeling trapped or like somebody's putting so much pressure on them. Um, similar to DAs in the romantic relationships, this will often cause them to shut down and sort of pull back um, and feel really uncomfortable in this sort of situation. So 
these are some really important things to keep in mind. Um, if you are DA, something else that's really valuable to look at is I did another video um, in this series about strengths and weaknesses. And again, like the weaknesses being like those blind spots that we don't see and what we can do to sort of move through them and become more self-aware around them. And I find that when we take full accountability and responsibility for ourselves in all forms, like have compassion for the, the painful programs we might have acquired over time, usually as a result of trauma. And, but, you know, look out for these things within ourselves and grow in these areas. It's like we can maximize our strengths and double down on them and then move through the part, the places that were challenged. Um, and so the very last thing I'll leave you up with for today is dismissive avoidance tend to um, get very easily triggered by a lot of conflict. And this is a huge place that's really valuable to work through because when you, you know, shy away from conflict or don't have conversations necessary to create actual resolution, you may be better compartmentalizing things than others, but it's still going to affect you at some level. And most other people are not so good at compartmentalizing. So unresolved conflict usually breeds resentment, frustration, um, and really stops us from being able to maximize our growth and potential. So that's it for today. Um, quick reminder as well, we are reopening um, for our round two, our fall sort of like semester of our attachment theory coaching. It's a live training. You get certified. I also teach you how to build a business um, and how to sort of create funnels for yourself and a system and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's a certification in all the work that I teach her on this channel. Um, and it's eight weeks total. If you can't make all the eight weeks, it's fine. They're, they are recorded. And there's a, a test at the end online, multiple choice um to obtain your certification but if you want to learn more about it there's also a link for that down in the description box below thank you for watching thank you so much for being here please like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video